All right, so we're actually gonna build an outside table. Outdoor dining table. An, oh, sorry, an outdoor dining table. Uh, we're actually gonna use uh, six by six as the main base. And then uh, we're gonna use, I think, two by six. We said we're gonna go with two by sixes for the top. So I'm gonna actually show you how I'm gonna go about making the bottom frame, which I'm gonna do 45 cuts. I think it looks a lot cleaner than just cutting them straight. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, just so you'll know, if you, if you actually use the bottom part here, this corner and this corner gives you a 45 cut. So I'm gonna do that here. And then I'm gonna flip this thing over. Then I'm gonna go right there, straight this way. I'm gonna flip it over one more time. And I'm gonna go Go from here to here, it's fresh right there. All right, I'm gonna use a skill saw here, and I usually cut on the side that's basically gonna throw away. And I have the blade backwards because I like to grab it like this. It gives me a better grip. There you go. Hello. This is your 27 and a half. So this one, all we gotta do is just cut it straight. So just in case I'm, uh, I'm say, these are six by six by 12, and one log will make one leg if you cut them at the size that I'm cutting them. We'll make this base here. Yeah. So you're gonna do uh, 45 cut on one end and then you're gonna cut 39 inches. So once you measure 39 inches, you're gonna do your 45 cut this way. So this is gonna be the bottom part and the two legs are gonna be the side part. So remember, it's 39 inches. So this is your center? Yeah, that's the center. 39 inches to the end. I'm going a little overboard on how I'm actually gonna attach these two just because that's who I am, I guess. What? <laughs> so I'm gonna use this big bolt. These are, what? They're actually- You have a name for them at the store? They're, they're eight inches, yeah, you can buy them at Home Depot. They're eight inches. But what are they called, like what kind? Just regular, uh, I think they're leg bolts uh, for wood. It's about eight inches. You don't have to go overboard. You can use uh, regular duck screws, like two inch screws, and you can glue it 
and then screw a few here and screw a few that way on both sides and it'll be firm enough. I don't want any screws on the side, so I'm just gonna actually bolt it from the bottom with two bolts, should be good to go. We're gonna use two sizes. We're gonna use a one inch and we're gonna use a three eighths. The one inch, it's for when you actually do screw the, uh, the bolt down, if you're going with the bolt, then your ratchet is gonna actually fit through it and you're gonna be able to sit it flush. Because if not, the bolt's head's gonna stick out and it's gonna wobble. So you're gonna pick where the hole's gonna go. So we're gonna do one here. Just, just because it's going to be very hard to drill through this uh, piece of wood and this piece of wood while uh, while you're holding it straight. So what I recommend is get yourself a piece of wood. And make sure this thing is is as straight as possible. You can always use a straight edge to double check. So make sure it's straight. Get your piece of wood. Um, drilling all the way through the other piece of wood it's not gonna come apart this thing going apart so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm actually gonna cut the edges out because uh, the wood when you buy it, it's actually round you can see when you put it together, there's still a seam here. You see how it basically dips like that? Mm -hmm. So I actually cut these two right here. And you see how close they got? Oh, it makes them flush. Yeah. Okay, so cool. That's what I'm doing. Uh, two by 10, two by 10 by 10. Two by 10 by 10. Yeah. Okay, so this is not put together. He just put it up here just to give me a visual, but you get the gist of it. Your so, uh, table saw. So you're using a table saw? Is it a specific kind of blade or no? Well, I use the uh, I use the, uh, the real fine edge blades just because it, it cuts a finer line instead of using uh, the normal blades. And usually you can see by the teeth, the more teeth you got, the finer the cut is. When the teeth are more spread out, it cuts very rough. That's more for like two by fours and stuff like that. And sometimes I get asked about tools. This is a rigid. Yeah. We know what this kind. is a good uh so these are they're, they're good they're, they actually can take a little bit of beating uh but the good thing is is that they give you lifetime warranty or any part and we got it at home depot right yeah okay so you get lifetime warranty so everything was wrong you just basically uh call rigid and they'll send you a new part way to do this by cutting these so you basically measure them and like i said even though it's, it's a two by uh by ten it's never the side the right size so it's gonna be like half an inch to one fourth shorter so what i'm gonna do is since this is nine and one fourth i'm gonna set the table at one and one eighth so i'll cut all one side at one and one eighth once that's done 
Then I will adjust the table again and cut it at nine. And then you cut the other side that's, once you get them all, that means you're done. So in that way you can actually squeeze them all together. And both, all the sides will be the same. And since we're putting the border, because I could leave it, you could leave the round end on, just so you won't hit, like if you hit yourself with it, straight edge, you're gonna, you're gonna tear your skin open. But since we're gonna put a border in, so I'm still having to cut this side, bitch. If you don't, if you're not gonna put a border on the table, then you can just leave the round edge at the end. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm gonna actually make myself a pants because I don't want to have one long enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get two by fours. I'm gonna try to get them as close as possible. Yes. until all this is straight once it's straight and that's when i'm going to actually screw it in i'm going to grab myself a strap and go around this and start cranking it to make it tight yeah. look at you little macgyver if i have the long prints it'll be a lot easier but i still have to do this somehow because if, if once you start tightening, it, it's gonna want to pop up. So, I mean, this is just to hold it so it won't pop up. So once you have it all, like I said, once you put the glue in, you, you start ratcheting it. Then all you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to grab another piece of wood like this, and you can either screw it on the bottom or screw it on top, however you want it. Just if you screw it on top, you're gonna see the screw holes. So screw it on the bottom until all the pieces are flash and flush with each other and then you let it sit overnight before i start putting this stuff together i gotta make sure that even though it looks like it's straight but it's not as you can see so i use the straight edge and piece of wood and make sure that everything's flat. Now I'm gonna grab some glue, get some glue, and then push it back to the other one, to the other one, to the other one, to the other one. Once they're all in there, I gotta make sure this thing's straight, put that one back on, and then start ratcheting so it keeps everything flat. This is what he's using. Okay, so I'll let it sit for uh, 18 hours and now I'm taking the strap out. What I did was 
guys. I use my uh, my T square here to make sure that all my boards are gonna be straight. So as you can see, they're not because they, they never cut them perfectly. So I made a line. That's what I'm gonna have to cut to make sure this is gonna be flush with that. And then I put the same thing here. Everything squared, get a line, and that's what I gotta cut. This is to give us a border? Yeah. sure the, the chairs stay on the rug when we pull them out and two is that remember the pieces of wood that we're using are 10 foot in length so if you only cut out half an inch then when you actually do the size of the border you're gonna be short about one and a half inch so the best way to do is to add to actually measure from here to here what 10 inches is and then so make sure you measure, you put your first border in, and then you measure from here to here, 10 feet, which is, that's the width, that's the length of the boards we're using. So once you measure here, you basically will put your, your other border and make a mark. And then from there, you measure both sides and cut it. Because if you actually just trim it just a little bit, when you put your border in, you're gonna be short on your sides. So instead of you going out up and buying another piece of wood that's longer, just to make your sides, cut your table to the width of the uh, board that you're actually using. So are these boards gonna work now or? Yeah, they're gonna work now. Okay. So. What I'm doing is I'm basically marking the thickness of the piece of wood here, mm -hmm. of the uh, two by six. That way I don't have to, I can actually pre-fill the holes here. Without having to do it while it's there. Thank <laughs> you. 
You need the spatula? Yeah. Oh, you're filling the cracks. Yeah. Okay, I thought it was just for the holes. I mean, do you want me to fill the cracks? Or do you want to have some type of... You don't want the cracks? Um, At least this. Yeah, these I would say to do around the, the border and the holes. That's it, you just put it in. Yep. You buy the spatula separate? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're, they're plastic. They're chibis. So you're gonna do this all the way through and then how long do you have to let it sit? Oh, for an hour or so. An hour, and then you sand it? Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna do this all around the border and all the nail or the screw holes. Yeah. And then the legs. Or do you wanna have it where it's to fill in the cracks, you mean? Yeah. Alright, so now we're on what day is this of this project? Day three? Four? Day three. Three. Okay, so y'all saw yesterday he put in all of the wood filler so you let it set out overnight and so then today you're gonna do sanding yeah okay it looks really good though it does okay so you did all the cracks on the legs too yeah. that's well, optional if you guys want to do that yeah there's some like it, i'm gonna sand them down and then we'll see like once you sand down there are gonna be parts that you probably miss it's gonna need some more but like i said it's just this is all a process yeah oh let me get the uh, let me get the sand tape. Okay. I'm gonna use uh, the 80. So always remember the lower the number, the rougher the sandpaper is. The higher the number, the thinner sandpaper is. What kind of sander is this? That's a Makita. Okay. And they do have an, a Dewalt one that I would like to buy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I think it's like 109. And it's the same thing, same pad, the same pad and everything. Except for it's, it has a handle and it, you can hold it on like this. It has more of a gun feel, like if you're holding a gun. Oh, I see. Yeah. So. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to change the uh, metal bracket that I put in there because it looks like it's a little too flimsy. Mm -hmm. It's just, like I said, I've, I've never done, it's not that I've never done this tip or this big, it's just I've never done it where everything is, like you don't have a cross member, you see what I'm saying? So I'm trying to still figure it out. But yeah, I wanted out. a more simple design, so there's not a whole lot going under here, whereas normally you would have all kinds of so, brace and support and, and stuff. Then before, and even then before I sand this thing down, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna put uh, two by fours to the bottom 
and screw from the bottom to make sure everything is, is uh, secure. See what I'm saying? Okay. And it's actually as flush as possible before I start. So now down. you got to flip it over? Yeah, I'm going to flip it over and do all this. Well, I can do it from the bottom. It's not a big problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sand down some of the uh, disperfections here just to make sure it's flush before I put the piece out. But you see sometimes, like I said, it's not, it's not perfect, perfect, but it's not a big problem. I cut two by fours, the same length is the inside boards. Oh, so it locks in? Yeah, so it literally slides in. Now, of course, I give myself like a quarter inch play so it won't be so tight. So I put two of them because a lot of the times these uh, two by tens, they work. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see how it work it is. Oh, it kind of bows yeah. down. I don't so know if y'all can tell. One of the sides will pop up. So you try to either try to find the, the, uh, the ones that are pretty straight or go with the two by fours because eventually even though, the, even though these are straight, when you buy them, when they dry out, they'll start working. So, so you just screwed these in? Yeah. So I, I basically put two, measure them, screw them in like this. So now you have a stronger base. Now once you put them in there, you can actually screw from the bottom up to the here. And then do the same thing over there. And then you can grab, uh, I'm going to see if I can just put two two by fours this way. So. In the center? In the center. What? Right here and here. Just so these grow, uh, grooves will eat either they're going to, so I'm either trying to get them to sit straight if possible, even after I put the glue or just basically screw them in there so when the, the wood dries, it doesn't warp anymore. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So once you, if you actually put a, a two by four from the bottom here, and you'll put like a screw here and a screw here. No, you can even put three, it's up to you. But you can put in each end, because that's where it basically works, not in the middle. Put here, 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 and here, it'll keep it from working. baby smooth looks good i love all the the detail no seriously it's like super smooth like a baby's bottom she looks pretty you can see all the, the seams in here very nice very nice so now it's time for stain we keep getting rain off and on all day which is random because we're not even supposed to have rain so Manny's got the um, the tarp underneath so this way if he has any spills he doesn't get on the concrete and then he also put the little planks there um, so this way he can get the base it makes it easier for him okay so we're trying to match originally I wanted this table natural uh, but because we have the furniture over here that's teak, it's a little darker. It's actually a little darker in person than it's showing on camera. So what I'm thinking we're gonna do is mix the natural and the uh, early American, is that it? Yeah. Okay. See, I was gonna keep her natural and then just put a poly on her, but can't do that. Mm -hmm. Huh? Nothing, you're dripping all over the concrete. But I'm not saying nothing. I can't hear you. No. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so it already has one coat of the natural stain, which is, okay. It has one coat of natural. And now Manny's going over it with, uh, let me zoom in on that. This is the early American. So, what we're trying to accomplish is matching it to the teak furniture we got over there already. It's very rich and I love all the green detailing that you can see. She's pretty. Here's our little supervisor. He likes to sit and watch Manny work. Can y'all see him? There's Enzo. Enzo. <laughs> he likes to supervise. Good old Amazon just came through. So we picked up this clear coat for the outdoor dining table. Manny said he tried to find it locally, but all they had was like the big gallon size and we don't need that much. So good old Amazon for the win. There it is. All right, so she's got one coat of clear coat so far. And then I forgot to film yesterday, but Manny went over it lightly with, you used, what'd you say, ebony? Yeah, no, 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 I used the uh, mahogany. Oh, sorry, a mahogany stain to bring out the the details in the table. So I think you're supposed to use what three three coats? Yeah. That's what the so one the lady first, I follow that works with Home Depot. So she, the first two coats, you basically just brush them in, and for the third coat, you sand it down and give them the third coat. So it looks kind of purple blue, but it's gonna dry clear. So don't let the color freak you out. And this one is specifically for outdoors. So this will dry like this.